Hi friends. Happy snowy Saturday in Pennsylvania. Today I was thinking of my grandfather who went to be with the Lord about 20 years ago already. I can't believe it's been that long. And one of his fa famous sayings that he always said was, you don't know what you're missing. My grandfather loved life. He loved to try new things. He loved food. He loved recreation. And I remember as a little kid, him saying that all the time. I remember him getting this huge watermelon once when we were at the beach and he asked me if I wanted some and I said, no, pop up. I don't like, I don't like watermelon. And he, he said, you don't know what you're missing. And to be honest, as I think back to that, he was right because I don't even know if I had ever tried watermelon before. So the point is until we've tried something, until we've tasted something and understood the goodness of it, we really don't know what we're missing. And I was, I was thinking about that this morning. Uh, I, I had the, the blessing of, of exercising this morning, which I love to do. I've, I've been a faithful gym goer now for, I don't know, seven or eight years. But it took my mom inviting me to go to a week of free gym time. She invited me to go to classes with her for a week about seven or eight years ago. And I remember saying no at first, but then she was kind of persistent. She's like, you should really try this. I think you'd like it. So I finally said yes. And boy, did I not know what I was missing. I didn't know how, how amazing it would be to get into a workout routine and, and how good I would feel and just doing something for myself when I, you know, a mom of four young children at the time. And it felt so good. And, and I've been going for seven or eight years now faithfully, but if my mom wouldn't have kind of being like been persistent and inviting me to go to the gym for that free week. I really don't know that I would have made it like a regular habit and routine in my life. So I was thinking about that when it when it comes to like our relationship with the Lord and how are we exuding the love of Christ to others in our lives to give them a taste of what they could have in knowing Jesus as their savior. Are we spreading the aroma of God? Are we allowing others to taste and see his goodness? And I'm asking myself that question today too. So here's some notes I took this, this morning and last night. We often don't know how much we really need something until we try it. Many times we need an invitation to try something new. So we, we need someone to say like, hey, you should really try this. And then they tell us all the reasons why we should try it. And then we try it and then we realize how much we love it. We easily get stuck in our routines that sometimes it's hard to see outside of our narrow view. The fact is we don't know what we're missing if we're not willing to try anything new. Have you ever invited someone to an, an event before, a party or a wedding or out to dinner? I know I have. I've, I've invited people to church before too. And to be honest, most of the time when I invite people to church, they usually don't end up accepting the invitation. They usually are always receive it in a kind way. And they're like, Oh, yeah, I'll think about that. Or I'll talk to my family about that. And then it just it never comes to fruition it most of the time. But I was thinking about when when I initiate prayer with somebody and I say, I'm going to pray for you right now, especially after they've just told me a list of burdens. And I'm like, I'm going to pray for you right now. I can't think of any instances where someone has turned down an invitation for me to pray for them right on the spot. Um, so I, I was thinking about how praying for somebody right on the spot is such an amazing way to just exude the aroma of Christ and to give others a taste of his goodness and to also show others what it's like to pray just in, in having a conversation with God. I feel like so many people don't know that they can have a conversation with God, that we don't just need to memorize a prayer and recite that prayer back to God, but we can talk to him like he's our best friend. He's our heavenly father. And and just that he's right here and we can have that conversation with him. I, I know I've, I've had a couple people tell me after I got done praying or, or after listening to me pray, they're like, I didn't know that, that you could talk to God that way. Like, you know, um, so maybe people just need to, to be brought to that understanding and to that knowledge. Many people need to experience powerful prayer in order to realize how much they're missing it and need it in their lives. Many people need to be taught how to pray. Psalm 34, 8 says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. So we should give people a taste of Jesus. Second Corinthians 
2, starting at verse 14. But thanks be to God who always leads us as captives in Christ's triumphal procession and uses us to spread the aroma of the knowledge of him everywhere. For we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are, be, who are perishing. To the one we are an aroma that brings death, to the other an aroma that brings life. So I'm praying today, friend, that we can spread the aroma of the knowledge of God, the, the knowledge of Jesus everywhere we go, that others would taste and see his goodness and that others would, would desire to, to come in, that they would desire a prayer life, that they would desire to have an encounter with the living God, that they would desire to, to read God's word and that they would go from death to life. And really so many don't know what they're missing. So I feel like it's up to us to reveal to them what they're missing, to show them the truth, to, to lead them to the truth. And one way we can do that is by praying for others and just spreading the aroma of the knowledge of Jesus wherever we go. God bless your day, friend.